Hello class, welcome to Statistics and Probability. In this video, we're going to have our summary discussion on the concepts related to the normal probability distribution. Our learning objectives is for you to state the properties of the normal curve, sketch the graph of normal distribution, and to relate raw scores into standard normal scores or for you to um, convert raw scores into its equivalent z-scores. For the Padlet activities, the link is provided in our group chat. So you may pause and resume watching this video after you uploaded or submit the answers to the provided questions. Part 1, Properties of Normal Distribution. So direction. Provide the answers for the following questions. Write your answers in padlet.com under part 1 answer so letter a enumerate the properties of normal distribution and b what are the two factors that affect the normal curve okay so after uploading your answers you may resume watching this video before we discuss what are the answers to the given questions let us first define what is a normal probability distribution when we say normal probability distribution or normal curve or bell curve it is a probability function that describes how the values of a continuous random variables are distributed so when we say normal probability distribution it is a probability distribution of a continuous random variables so in our in in the past chapter we learned how to construct and how to interpret discrete probability distribution in this chapter, we're going to learn how to um, construct, we're going to learn how to interpret, and as well as to apply, how to apply the concepts of normal probability distribution in real-life situations. So, normal probability distribution is a continuous probability distribution where data are symmetrical around its mean. So, kapag sinabi natin normal, data must be symmetrical around its mean because there are some continuous probability distribution that are not symmetrical so for example are the good probability distribution so for example yeah so the the graph can can be good or the, the data can be good to the right or the data can be good to the left so this is not a normal probability distribution when we say normal probability distribution the data must be evenly distributed around its mean so let's say for example that this is evenly distributed Ayan. so when norm when we say normal probability distribution the data must be symmetrical around its mean because the data are evenly distributed around its mean so so whatever is the number of data found in the left side of the curve is the same as the number of data found to the right side of the curve so normal probability distribution is a theoretical or an ideal model that was obtained from mathematical calculation rather than from actual conduct of research so meaning that each of the values along the curve are based from a mathematical calculation rather than from um, an obtained value from observations so meaning that probability normal probability distribution is based on probability theory or based from calculation and not from an actual data gathering or not from an actual conduct of research however um, normal distribution is useful in the analysis and comparison of data and observations in an actual result of research. So we can use um, normal curve, we can use normal probability distribution in comparing data, in, in analyzing and comparing observations and data from an actual research. So the normal distribution refers to a continuous probability distribution described by the normal equation. So here we have our normal equation. So, yeah. so, so each of the values along this curve, along the curve of the normal distribution, is a result of this normal equation. So 
to to know what this symbol means just to refer to your modules so i'm showing this to you because um itong curve na to hindi lang siya bastang ginawa na curve so may basis yung values dito sa curve and that basis came from this normal equation each point along the curve is a probability that corresponds to an specific scores. For example, under at the baseline, so diba, at the baseline of a normal curve, there are scores. For example, maybe standard scores wherein the mean is equal to zero and the others is and the standard deviation is one. So each of the points here, each of of the scores found at the baseline, at the baseline of the normal curve has a corresponding probability. So just by looking at the um, graph of a normal distribution, um, we can, uh, no, we can, um, we we are able to collect many information that could characterize our data. So that is why it is also important for us to familiarize with the properties of a normal distribution. So the first property of a nor of normal distribution is that the distribution is a curve. So the distribution curve is a bell shape. So it's bell shape. So when we when we draw a normal distribution, dapat bell shape siya. So ganyan ang itsura niya. Second property is that the curve is symmetrical about its center. So if we draw a center, the 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 area the area to the left side of the curve must be equal to the area to the right side of the curve so later on we'll know what is the total area under the nor normal curve so whatever is the slope to the to the left side must be the same to the right side because they are symmetrical so they mirror each other third property is that the mean the median and the mode coincide at the center so kapag sinabing normal distribution yung mean natin and the same as the median and the mode is found at the center so dito so ang ibig sabihin nito class that the mean whatever is the value of the mean is also the value of the mode and the median so they have the same value otherwise it is not a normal distribution for example mas mataas yung value ni mean doon sa value ni ni, ni median so hindi na siya normal distribution because the the mean will not lie at the same point where the median is found. The curve is asymptotic to the baseline. To the baseline or to the horizontal axis. So if we look at the baseline of a normal curve, so the, the, the curve must not touch our um tawag dito, our baseline. So the 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 x axis or the the horizontal axis. So because this um, value is continuous, so continuous to the negative infinity and continuous to the positive infinity. So it, it will never touch our um, x-axis. And of course, the area under the normal curve is equivalent to 1. So when we, if we get the, the total area, if we get the sum of all the probabilities, so sabi natin kanina that each of the points along this curve represents a probability the probability of its corresponding raw scores of its equivalent raw scores so therefore if we get um the sum of all the of all the probabilities along this um curve line it must be equal to one so the same with the discrete probability distribution the value of a probability is between zero and one wherein zero indicates impossibility and one indicates certainty Another important property of normal distribution is that um, the graph of the normal distribution depends on the value of the mean and the standard deviation. Using Desmos, let us um, look at how or on how the mean and the standard deviation affects the direction and the shape of our normal curve. So here I have a standard normal curve with the mean of 0 and standard deviation of man standard deviation of 1 so I entered here the normal equation so our um, value of the mean 
So, as represented by B is equal to 0. And the value of our standard deviation is equal to 1. So, as represented by um, letter A. So, what will happen if we increase or decrease the value of the mean and the standard deviation? So, a paano niya maapektuhan yung direction at yung shape ng ating normal curve? So, let's start with the mean. So, if we increase the value of the mean, so may kita naman natin that the curve is shifted to the right end of our distribution. But if we decrease the value of the mean, so our curve is shifted to the left end of our distribution. So meaning that the, that the mean of the normal distribution affects the direction of uh, the mean of a distribution affects the direction of the curve so it can be shifted to the right or it can be shifted to the left so kapag iskud na yung ano natin kapag iskud na yung distribution natin so meaning hindi na siya normal distribution because our 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 um, data is iskud to the left or iskud to the right hindi na siya normal distribution because our mean um, could be higher or lower than the median and the mode. So, what will happen kapag yung standard deviation naman, yung ano natin, yung binago natin yung value? So, if we increase or decrease the value of the standard deviation, ano mangyayari sa curve natin? So, here, here I have, so letter A, to represent the standard deviation of this normal distribution. So, if we increase the value of the standard di distribution st standard deviation rather so make it natin that the curve becomes um wider and shorter and eventually it becomes flat so kapag naging flat na yung ating curve so hindi na siya curve so hindi na siya normal distribution that becomes a uniform distribution wherein kapag sinabi natin uniform distribution each of the scores at the baseline of our um, at the baseline of our curve so each of the scores at the baseline of the graph has um, equal chances of occurring so kapag normal distribution um, bell, bell shape dapat siya diba so yun yung one of the properties so kung hindi siya bell shape hindi na siya normal distribution so if we decrease the value of our um, tawag dito standard deviation so nakikita natin that the curve becomes taller and thinner. So, anong ibig sabihin ito? So, the, the standard deviation indicates diba, the, the, how scattered are the data around the mean. So, if the value of the standard deviation is large, the, the scores are very much scattered around the mean. So, some scores may be found on the extreme ends of our distribution. So, kapag, for example, uh, mataas yung standard deviation. So, may kita naman natin, di ba, kapag mababa yung, yung value ni, ni standard deviation, so here, it almost touches, it will never touch the, the x-axis. But, as you can see, at this point, it almost touches this, um, the value in this region. So, the same in the other side. Other side. So, kapag um, tinaasan natin yung value ni ano ni standard deviation so nakikita natin yan so the the probability that this score that that the data is found in this region becomes higher so sabi natin each point along this curve is the probability so since tumaas yung ating curve dito dito sa part na to so ibig sabihin kapag nag-increasing standard deviation mas marami din yung chances that the data are found on the extreme ends of our distribution. So, if, if the value of our standard deviation is um, small, kapag maliit lang yung standard deviation natin, this indicates that the scores are um, densely, um, it could be densely located near the mean. So, mas uniform yung inyong, um, ang tawag dito, data. So, andyan, nagko-concentrate siya near the mean natin. So, lalo na kapag binabaan nyo pa yung value. Ayan. Taller and skinnier. Okay, so, the mean affects the direction of the curve, while the standard deviation affects the height and the width of the normal distribution. 
So since um these two, um since the mean and um the standard deviation are the factors that affect the normal distribution, so we use these two in representing the normal curve. So by using this notation, so normal distribution notation. So meron tayong n quantity mu, comma sigma. So we're in n. Um, is the normal distribution, mu is our mean, and um, sigma is the standard deviation of the distribution. So, kapag binasa natin to, this is the normal distribution with the mean of, of the value, the equivalent value, and the standard deviation of blank. So, normal distribution with a mean of yung value na binigay, and the standard deviation standard deviation of blank so yung binigay na um, equivalent value dito so let us use this information to use our uh, to answer our problem in part 2 so part 2 so construct a normal distribution for the following observation so for the distribution with a mean of 52 and a standard deviation of 6. So, you may pause this video and then um, answer this problem and then upload your answers in Padlet. So, here are the steps in constructing or sketching the graph of a normal curve based on the values of the, the mean and the standard deviation of a given distribution. So, first, we need to draw the bell curve. Then locate the center of the curve using a vertical line. So, and draw three equidistant markings from the center along the horizontal axis. So, step two is that if the mean is given, write the value of the mean at the center of the distribution or at the center of the curve. And step 3 is to find the distribution, or is find the corresponding values of the equidistant markings you created at the bottom of, at the baseline of the curve. So, by using this equation. So, to summarize these steps, I have here a, wait lang, yan. So, I have here an illustration, so showing the graph and the equation. So, here I have um, the normal normal curve, so the bell shape. So, we have here the line indicating the center of the curve and then the mean must be located at the center. So, meaning it, um, katapat nitong linya na to, andyan yung value ni mean. Kasi si mean ang central tendency ng distribution natin. So, we have here three equidistant markings to the left and to the right. So, whatever is the distance of these markings to the left must be equal to the distance of these markings to the right. So, the same with this one. So, ito and then ito. So, to find the corresponding value or the scores corresponding to each of these um, markings, we need to um, add or subtract the value of the mean and the standard deviation. So, to do that, use this equation. So, this means that the score found in this area is one standard deviation away from the mean. So, the score found in this is two standard deviation away from the mean and the, the, tawag dito? the score found in this um, specific indicator is three standard deviations from the mean. So, the same doon sa kabilang side. So, ayan. So, dito, sa kabilang side, mag tayo. Dito, sa kabilang side, magsusubtract tayo. So, let's use now these um, steps to answer our problem. So, ang given natin kanina is we have a normal distribution with a mean of 52 and a standard deviation of 6. So, we want to know um, ano ba yung mga scores na nakalagay dito? So, yung first step natin is of course to draw our normal curve. So, ayan. So, draw our normal curve and then lag maglagay na kayo ng equidistant marking. So, at the center, we have here the mean and dito, equidistant markings natin. 3 to the left and 3 to the right. So, we want to know the corresponding value of these scores. 
So, to do that, we use the equation. So, meron tayo dito sa gitna, meron tayong mean. So, given si mean. So, we have here 52. So, ilagay na natin dito 52. So, ano yung value? One standard deviation to the right of the mean. So, to get the value of of the scores corresponding to one standard deviation to the right of the mean, we add the value of the standard deviation to the value of the mean. So, mean is equal to 52 plus 6. So, we'll get 58. So, two standard deviations away from the mean. So, meaning, di ba, ang standard deviation natin is 6. So, ibig sabihin, ito, 6 standard deviation away from the mean. And then, another 6 standard deviation. So, we can just, um, isusulat na lang natin to as 2 times 6, kasi dalawang 6. So, 2 times 6 plus the value of the mean. So, ang makukuha natin dyan is 64. And dito din, sa, dito din sa third indicator natin, 3 times 6 plus our mean, which is 52, will yield us to 70. Sa kabila naman, we're going to subtract. So, 46 ay 52 minus 6 will give us 46. 52 minus 2 times 6 will give us 40. And... 52 minus 3 times 6 will give us 34. So, now that we have the values, the corresponding scores, so, pwede na nating palitan. Pwede na nating lagyan ng number. So, sabi natin, the mean is 52. So, at the center of our distribution, andun mahanap si mean. So, ito ang ating mean. So, one standard deviation to the right, we have here 58. Two standard deviation to the right is 64 Ayan. and 3 standard deviation is 70 sa kabila naman, 1 standard deviation to the left is 46 2 standard deviation to the left is 40 and 3 standard deviation to the left is equal to 34 so this will now be the answers to this problem so kung ito lang naman yung pinapagawa create a norm a, a uh, construct a graph for this normal distribution, then this will be your final answer. So, otherwise, kung meron pang ibang pinapahanap, this will become part of your solution. Okay, so take note class that normal curve is one of the most important curve in statistics. So, because it provides graphical representations of statistical values needed to characterize a population. It, it can also be used for describing distributions of scores, interpreting the standard deviation, and making statements of probability. And it is an important ingredient for statistical inferences and decision making. So kahit na yung normal curve natin is based on a probability theory, we can um, use... Um, the concept of normal curve in statistical inferences and decision making so in actual conduct of research so let us now move on to standard normal scores or the z-scores so for the padlet activities answer the following questions so for the following problem convert the raw observation to its corresponding standard normal score. Write your answers in padlet.com under part 2 answers. So here's the problem. Suppose you have a normal distribution curve with a mean of 50 and standard deviation of 10. If you have a raw score of 75, how far away is your observation from the mean? So I have here the illustration. So showing the mean and the um, observation. So we have here 75 um, 75 as our raw score and we want to know how far away is this raw score from the mean in terms of standard normal scores so you may pause this video and then resume watching after you upload your answers so every normal curve regardless of its mean or standard deviation conforms to the empirical rule also called as the 68 95 and 99.7 rule. So, ibig sabihin nito that no matter how big or how small is your observation, whether you have um, 50 observation or 100 observations or you have 
1,000, 10,000 or more observations as long as, um, as long as the data in these observations are normally distributed, it will automatically follow the empirical rule. So one of you asked me last time, is there a rule that limits how many z-scores can be included at the baseline of the normal curve? So my answer to that is yes. And although um, this rule does not directly state that it limits the number of z-scores that can be found at the bottom, at the baseline, so at the baseline of our um, normal curve, it, uh, its conditions um, reflect that three standard deviation is enough to capture all the data in a normal distribution. So that rule is the empirical rule. So when we say empirical rule, it states that 99.7% of data observed following a normal distribution lies within three standard deviations from the mean. We mentioned that um, empirical rule is also called as the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. So, ano ibig sabihin itong mga number dito? So, what is 68, what is 95, and what is 99.7 or 99.7% rule? So, here I have a diagram. So, a normal curve showing how did we arrive to these numbers. So, if we inspect um, the area covered from the mean, to one standard deviation from the mean, so meaning this area, this will cover 34.1% of, of the distribution. So, 34.1%. So, since sabi natin that um, um, the area covered to the right is symmetrical to the area covered to the left. So, meaning, um, sabi natin that normal, normal distribution or normal curve is symmetrical. So, whatever is the measure or the area covered from the mean, to the right to one standard deviation from the right of the mean is the same as um, the area covered from the mean to one standard deviation to the left of the mean so therefore 34 percent then itong area na to. so if we add this um, area so we'll get about 66.2 percent or um, approximately 68 percent of the data can be found within one standard deviation from the mean so that is according to the empirical rule. So under under this rule, so under the, the um sabi dito, under the the empirical rule, 68% of the, the of the data falls under one standard deviation. So ganito na lang, one standard deviation um from the mean. So now the data the data or the area covered from one standard deviation between one standard deviation and two standard two standard deviation is 13.6 so this area correspond to 13.6% of all the data in in our distribution so if we if we add 34.1% to 13.6% this will result to 47 um, about 47 0.7%. So since sabi natin ulit this is symmetrical. So whatever is the data covered from the mean to two standard deviation. So whatever is the area covered from the mean to two standard deviation to the right is the same to the left. So ibig sabihin 47.7% din yung dito sa left side natin hanggang two standard deviation. So if we get the sum of this, we will get 95.4% or roughly um, 95% of the data is found within two standard deviations from the mean. And the same goes with three standard deviations. So, i-add lang natin ito doon sa, sa value, sa exact value kung ilang percent ang mahanap dito. And, ganun din sa right. So, 47 plus this um, remaining um, this um, area with, between two standard deviation and three standard deviation kapag in natin siya and then we add it to the value then dito sa kabila, we will get 99.7%. So thus, the rule also called as um, 90, 68, 95, and 99.7%. So meaning that um, three standard deviation is enough to represent um, 
represent all the data, almost all the data within the standard deviation. So the remaining observations is found within this region. So this is about 0.1% of um, 0.1 percent to the right, 0.1 percent to the left of the mean. So, yan yung remaining data. So, 99.7 percent of data is within three standard deviations. So, that's why when we are um, when we are um, sketching or constructing a normal distribution, a graph of normal distribution, we only include three standard deviation to the left and three standard deviation. To the right. So the, the question now is, how did we get this value? So paano natin nahanap si 34.1%, 13.6%, 2.1%. So paano natin siya nahanap? So the first step to that is to translate or convert our raw scores into its um, standard normal scores because standard normal scores allows us to allow us to um, um, find the area under the normal curve. So, standard normal score or z-scores is a measure of relative standing. It measures the distance of raw scores from the mean. So, the, the unit of measurement is standard deviation. So, this is um, in symbol, we have here sigma units. Ayan. So, we can also read this as sigma units or the standard deviation. So, when z-score is equal to 0, it is um, found at the mean. So, meaning dito z-score is equal to 0. So, when z-score is um, negative, it is found to the left of the mean and when the z-score is positive, uh, meaning that the data is found to the right side of the mean. So, there are 6 z-scores at the baseline of the normal curve. So, 3 z-scores to the left of the mean and then 3 z-scores to the right of the mean. So, we have here um, z-score is equal to 0 is at the center and then um, 3 z-scores to the left of the mean. So, we have here negative 1 standard deviation, negative 2 standard deviation, and negative 3 standard deviation. And to the right, we have 1 standard deviation, 2 standard deviation, and then 3 standard deviation. So, class, this negative value here, so this negative value, uh, so this negative um, sign here to the left side does not mean that the value or the scores is negative so it it just indicates that the that the value is um below the mean or is found to the left side of the curve left side of the mean or below the mean so a z score of zero means that the score is um average a z score of uh, a z-score found to the left of the distribution is below average and scores to the right of the distribution is above average. So, kung titignan natin dito, yung mga scores that lies at the center of the distribution or average. So, scores that are found to the left of the mean or below average. And scores that are found to the right um, ends or to the right side of the, the curve is above average. So, I'm sure that you're familiar with this term. So, especially kapag in-apply natin to sa scores or sa IQ um, ng mga students. So, for example, in your, um, if you um, take a standardized examination, for example, National Achievement Test or NCAE, NCAI, then um, your scores, you can see um, in your result that sometimes you have a description that your scores in, in a particular subject is average or below average or above average. So, paano nila yun nahanap? So, they applied this concept. So, the, 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 the concept of standard normal distribution. So, the standard normal curve is a normal probability distribution that has a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. So, when we convert um, scores into into a standard score then the 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 curve that we are going the graph of that distribution becomes a standard normal curve because the mean will automatically convert it to zero so meaning that every any standard normal curve has a mean of zero and has a standard deviation of one So, how do we now translate or convert raw scores into its um, equivalent z-scores? So, here are the steps. 
yeah. So we we just use this equation. So to find the z-score, uh, to convert a raw score into z-score, we use this um, equation. So z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. So this is for population data or for probability um, for probability experiments. And um, for number two, this is the second way. So if if the data is coming from a sample, then we use this. Um, tawag dito, we use this equation. So, z is equal to x minus x bar minus s. I divided by s. So, here is our legend. So, x, capital X means the raw score. So, mu is the population mean. x bar is the sample mean. Um, sigma is our standard deviation, population standard deviation. And the, the small letter s is our sample standard deviation. So, in our examples, we will, um, we will suppose that the data came from um, a population. So, sa mga examples natin. So, let us now answer our problem. So, our problem, di ba, sabi natin that we have a normal distribution with a mean of 50 and standard deviation of 10. And then, we want to find um, how far away is a score of 75 from its mean. So, gano'n siya kalayo sa ating mean. So, we want to know its corresponding z-score. So, let's suppose that this um, data came from a population. So, we're going to use this um, equation. So, z is equal to x minus mu divided by um, sigma, wherein x, capital X, is our raw score. So, itong mu is our mean. So, ayan. And then, this sigma is our standard Division. So, let's just um, substitute the equation with the corresponding values. So, 75 minus 50 divided by 10 is equal to 25 divided by 10. And it is equal to 2.5 or 2.50. So, lagyan yun na. So, if, if one, kung isa lang ang nakalagay dito na decimal place, so, walang ibang nakalagay. So, so, automatic na may 50 dyan. So, because in if we use this z-scores to associate it with the corresponding area under the normal curve, we need um, two decimal places. So, kung sobra naman, for example, sumobra three decimal places, round it off to the nearest, 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 sorry. So, nearest um, um, two decimal places. So, the nearest hundreds. So, therefore, our answer now here is that 75% um, is 2.5 sigma units away from our mean. So, our final answer now is that in a normal distribution where um, the distribution has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10, a raw score of 75 is 2.5 standard deviation or sigma units above the mean. So, kapag sinabi natin above the, above the mean, so, ibig sabihin, our z-score is positive. So, kapag positive, above the mean. Kapag negative, below the mean. Kapag zero ang z-score, it is equal to the mean or can be found at the center of the curve. So, since positive 2.5 sigma units, it is above the mean. So, the 75 is 2.5 units above the mean. So, take note that by relating raw scores into its corresponding standard score, we are able to represent extreme values into standardized scores and we are able to make comparisons of raw scores that came from different sources. So, for example, we want to compare um, the distribution of IQ between men and women. So, for example, ito yung distribution ng IQ ng um, men. So, for example, um, ang IQ niya, ang mean niya is um, 105 and then um, 110, 115 and then 120 example sa, sa lalaki to and then sa babae naman for example we have this um, mean of 100 and then 120 140 and 100 60. So, kung titignan nyo, ang standard deviation niya is dito 5, dito standard deviation niya is equal to 20. So, if we want to make a comparison, maapektuhan tayo nung value na nakikita natin. So, nakikita natin dito is mataas yung value 
nung, nung cross scores na nare-represent under the normal curve ng female versus sa male. So, this is just an example. So, and kung titignan naman natin dito yung mean, yung mean naman dito is mas mataas yung mean ng, ng male compared sa female. So, sometimes if we look at the value of the raw scores, naapektuhan yung um, pag-interpret natin. So, we need to compare this in standardized um in in terms of standardized scores. So pag dinignan natin siya if we convert it into standardized score, so makikita natin na ito yung mean natin kahit na mas mataas siya, makikita natin that the mean will be both equal to 0. So one standard deviation is 1 2 3 the same here 1 2 3. So mas madali sa ating mag-compare without bias. So that's that is just one of of the uh, main reason why we use standard um, scores. Also, um, using standardized scores, we are able to identify the direction and degree of deviation of any given raw scores from the mean of the distribution. Kasi sabi nga natin that z scores is um, is a measure on how far away is, uh, is an, a specific score from the mean of any data, any set of data. And lastly, so hindi ko na naisabay dito, so last is that by um by ano nga yun? by translating it into z score we are able to associate um the score to its um corresponding area area covered under the mean ay under the distribution or the curve so, ginagamit natin yung z-score para mahanap natin yung area doon sa, ano natin, doon under sa normal curve natin. So, that will give us the probability. So, for part 3, so, in, in our Padlet, construct a standard normal distribution for a normal distribution with a mean of 25 and um, standard deviation of 3. Then, determine the degree of deviation of a score of 30. So, we want to construct a standard normal distribution and we want to find how far away is a score of 30 from our mean. So, after, um, after uploading, you may resume watching this video. So, for the solution, so again, ito yung solution natin. So, first, we construct our normal distribution curve. So, kapalitan natin to ng ating corresponding um, raw scores. So, using this um, equation, nakuha natin tong mga value na to. So, si mean, sa gitna siya, and then 1 standard deviation, 2 standard deviation, and 3 standard deviation to the right, and 1 standard deviation, 2 standard deviation, and 3 standard deviation to the left. So, ayan yung ating um, um, normal curve representing the raw scores and the mean of our <clears throat> distribution. So, we want to know how far away is 30 from our mean. So, using our equation, so suppose that the data came from a population. So, gamitin ulit natin tong um, atawag dito, equation na to. So, palitan lang natin siya with the given. So, 30 minus 25 divided by 3 is equal to 5 divided by 3 is equal to 1.67. So, yung answer nito is 1.666 something hanggang makarating siya 7. So, i-ano nyo, i-tawag dyan, round off nyo siya to the nearest 100. So, therefore, mayroon siyang 1.67. So, um, our final answer now is that in a normal distribution with the mean of 25 and standard deviation of 3, a raw score of 30 is 1.67 standard deviation above the mean. So, bakit siya above the mean? So, again, positive yung, ano natin, positive yung um, z-score natin. So, that's why it is found above the mean. So, that's all for this um, discussion. So, in our next video, we're going to discuss um, how um, to use the standard or the, the, Z, the Z table and how to find the area under the normal curve. So, if you have any question, um, you may send it to me via the messenger, our group chat. And um, I hope you learned something in this video. So, that's all for today. Thank you.